Today we will explain in which situation Polka works and how it can be used. Polka is a planning and control system which was designed by Ray John Surrey, the founder of Quick Response Manufacturing, or QRM. QRM can be seen as lean for high variety, low volume companies. It is focused on realizing short throughput times. The Polka planning and control system assumes the presence of dependent cells that deliver items to other cells. Each manufacturing order requires processing within a number of cells. Let us first discuss the organization on the work floor. In literature, we can find two major layout types for high variety, low volume manufacturing companies. First, the traditional functional layout, where machines are organized on the work floor according to their processes. So, we may have a welding department, a punching department, and a machining department. Parts move from one to another department according to the processes needed in the routing of their parts. In a cellular layout, the machines are organized in autonomous units, each able to process complete parts which need the same processes. Basically, we created mini factories at the work floor, where a planning department is responsible for the planning and control of the goods flow in a functional layout. The team in a cellular layout is responsible for the goods flow within the cell. A cellular layout offers many advantages. One of the advantages is that it brings planning and control responsibilities to the work floor. The team is responsible for the timely manufacturing of a set of orders. It is not always possible, though, to create a stable cellular layout. The mix of products may change all the time, which may cause an unbalance between the cells. Some machines may be overutilized in one cell, while the same machines are underutilized in another. To overcome this situation, there are several variants of the cellular system possible. Here you see the so-called dynamic layout. Machines can be moved to other cells if it fits better to the mix of the manufacturing orders. Another possibility is if the machines cannot be easily moved from one cell to another, then the design of a fractal layout might be a possibility. In a fractal layout, cells are created in such a way that many product types can be produced in one or more cells. This creates the possibility to cope with mixed flexibility. In general, we conclude that the way in which the work floor is organized determines the ease of production planning and control. We call a layout which fits to the Polka planning and control system a Polka layout. This is a modular layout. Each cell is responsible for a number of operations to be performed on products. The cells are not independent, but dependent. Each production order required processes in a number of cells. Here, we summarize that a Polka layout is relatively stable for changes in the mix of jobs. Identical machines which have a critical capacity are not divided among more than one cell. Less important machines are located in cells where they are most needed. The idea of the modular Polka layout is that each cell has its own lead time. The interface between cells are all equal and managed by the Polka control system. Polka coordinates the order flow between the dependent cells. It is an acronym from Paired Cell Overlapping Loops of Cards Authorization. We will explain this further. First, we have cells. For instance, cell P3, S2, and A1. A certain production order may need these cells. Next, there are loops which overlap two cells. So, we have two loops for the red order. In each loop, Polka cards are running. The availability of a Polka card means that it is okay to start a manufacturing task of an order which needs both cells. This also implies that two Polka cards are needed for the processing in cell S2. Suppose that a Polka card becomes available and moves to P3. It gets connected with a product, suppose the red one. The processing in P3 can now start. After finishing, the product goes together with the card to S2. It can only be processed in S2, however, if a card becomes available from the next loop as well. Then the processing in S2 may start. After finishing all the processes in S2, the product may move to the next cell. The card from the first loop now becomes available for a new product or job. The number of Polka cards needed in the loop of cells A and B can be calculated by the means of this formula. It comes from Little's Law, which states that the average work in process equals the average output per time unit times the average throughput time. Here, LT sub A plus LT sub B equals the acceptable throughput time for both cells. D sub AB is the average number of jobs that need to be processed in cell A and then cell B in time period Q. 
It is important to note that this formula is just an estimation. It is no problem to add a safety factor. Polka is based on the principle of pole. Only when there is capacity for the next operation, an operation may start. However, there is also a push element in Polka, which creates the manufacturing orders. This is called high-level MRP. The MRP system uses customer orders and forecast orders to load the Polka manufacturing system. The high-level MRP system does not consider the manufacturing times needed for each process, but just uses the lead times needed for each cell. The high-level MRP system sets authorization dates for the manufacturing of processing of jobs in each cell. In the example given here, the job requires processing in P3, S2, and A1. The authorization day for cell 2 is August 4th. This means that this job is not allowed to start processing in this cell until August 4th, even if cards are available from the loops P3S2 and S2A1. The lead times for the various product families can be easily calculated when using Polka. Product family 1, for instance, needs cell 1, cell 2, and cell 3. The lead times for these cells are T1, T2, and T3. This implies that the total lead time for product family 1 is T1 plus T2 plus T3. Here it becomes clear that layout design and, subsequently, lead time setting for the cells is an important element in the design of the whole Polka system. What are the advantages and disadvantages of Polka? First, Polka gives clear objectives for each cell. The cell is made responsible for realizing lead times and due dates. Furthermore, the team has clear variables for further improvement. Second, socio-technical principles are obeyed in the design of the cells. They are as autonomous as possible and do have the means to cope with variances. Although the interfaces between cells are identical, the scheduling of jobs within each cell may be different. Some cells may function as a lean flow line, other cells may use a Gantt chart or other methods. There are also risks and disadvantages of Polka. There is a risk of having too many loops. Each loop contains a number of Polka cards, and each of these cards may be connected with a product or manufacturing order. If there are too many loops, then the situation can become difficult to control. Another disadvantage is the traffic of physical cards needed in the Polka system. Right now, there are few companies offering software for ePolka. Finally, Polka is not that easy. It takes time to understand the reasons for the loops in Polka and the linkage with MRP. Thank you for watching this overview lecture on the Polka Planning and Control System.